So we're going to jump right in because we have a incredible story today from one of our beautiful visionary leader community members. Her name is Ellen Schweikert. Ellen Schweikert is a wellness advocate with doTERRA. She is also a graphic designer, web designer, and social media manager. You might know her because she keeps visionary leaders running and Jasmine and Juniper and Essential Wellness and a few other teams in doTERRA. So we love Ellen. Big, big, big love to Ellen. And this is one of the reasons that when I heard her story, not only was I just so happy for her health and her healing, but I also was like, oh my gosh, you have to share it. So luckily Ellen said yes when I asked her to share. And we're gonna bring her on now to talk about her journey with ovarian cysts and how she was able to turn her health around. So Ellen, take it away. Good morning. I am excited to be here um, and talk about this kind of publicly for the first time really um, since this happened. So I'm actually gonna share my screen if that's okay. And I'm gonna hit the share button, which should be right over here. Give me just one second. Will you give me a thumbs up if this appears for you? Good, okay, thank you. Okay, cool. So um, I have a lot to talk about today. So I always like to put a little agenda on here. Um, I want to tell my story to you, and I also want to share some tips about understanding your relationship with your hormones. Um, I want to talk about like daily changes that you could be making to your diet. And of course, like what oils we should be using if we have ovarian cysts. So first things first, I did not know that I had this problem at all. Um, I just went to my yearly checkups, like so many of us do, and um, I didn't know that I even struggled with this, but I also had really heavy periods. I had a ton of cramping, like really bad. Um, like the first and second day of my period, usually I couldn't even work or anything. It was so painful. Um, and yeah, I can get into that later, but it was pretty awful. So about a year and a half ago, though, I wasn't thinking about any of this. I was at doTERRA's global convention. So I think most of you have been to doTERRA's global convention in Utah, but if you haven't, it's like one huge party and there's like a concert and we're like learning and we're having such a great time. And I was like partying it up with most of the people on this call right now. So like we were having a grand time. I was not thinking about ovaries at all whatsoever. And it was great um, until I was in excruciating pain. So like all week, not to be TMI at all, but I just thought that I had like indigestion because we were eating crazy vacation food and like going out and having a drink. Um, and just like, you know, when you eat on vacation, sometimes your stomach is like, whoa, like that's too much. But this was next level. Like it was so painful. So on Friday, by the end of convention, I was starting to think like, this is something so much more. And like, if you know me at all, you know, I'm not like a super emotional person. Like I don't cry very much or anything like that. And I was literally in tears from the pain from my ovaries. So I, um, during convention on Friday, I think it was like September 14th, forever burned in my memory. Um, everyone else was listening to Aaron Fugate speak at convention, but I was across the street in the Nordstrom bathroom on the floor crying because I was in so much pain. Um, and finally, when convention ended, um, we, my friends and I went back to the Airbnb and I was just sobbing. I was like, you guys, I don't know what to do. Like we're, I'm thousands of miles away from my home in Oregon. I drove here. We have to check out of the Airbnb. I'm freaking out. Um, but hours later, I was in so much pain. My friends were like, we have to take you to the emergency room. This is horrible. So I went and the nurses or the technicians eyes when they did a scan of me told me everything that I needed to know like something was horribly wrong it was not just like 
ate a few too many enchiladas, you know? So like her, her eyes got huge. And I was just like, Oh my God, like, this is really bad. Um, but of course I was high on morphine. So like, what can you do? You know? So I, this is a picture of me on the right in a hospital bed. Um, and I had to have a surgery because it turns out that I had a huge ovarian cyst, but I also had a fallopian tube tumor that is super, super rare, like has only happened like six times in history. And the combination of those two were so heavy that they twisted my fallopian tube and cut off blood flow to my ovary. So that's called ovarian torsion. And I know for a fact that there are people on the Stoterra team who have also experienced it, that we've talked about it, that it is the worst pain ever. It's awful. So um, no wonder I felt like I was dying. Someone was literally twisting my insides and it was, it was awful. So I had to have my fallopian tube removed at 27 years old, which was really scary to me. Um, and the tumor, thank heavens, was non-cancerous. Um, and I wondered when I left the hospital, and I think other people have had this question too, like, how would this happen? Like, how would this happen to you? Why did it happen to you? What can you do about it? Because one thing that my doctor said was like, you've been listening, like, this is not a recent problem. This has been here for years. So not only has your tumor been here for probably like maybe even a decade, it's really bad, but your cyst is so big that there's no way that it's like a recent problem. So I had a lot of questions, but this was just the beginning. So I left the hospital and immediately the start, the bills started showing up and I was just in my apartment, you know, back in Oregon just bloated and just feeling like crap, just awful. And I started to have to go in for regular ultrasounds, like every other month ultrasounds, which was so expensive and so stressful. And I just kept finding out that I had more problems. So they found another cyst that was so big that they literally were like, we'll get you on the schedule to have it removed this week. And they were like, you have fluid in your abdomen, you have tons of inflammation, you know, it's, it's pretty bad. And I could have said yes to getting another surgery, but something like every cell in my body was like, no, like just stop, just stop. Like, let's look at this. Let's think about this. Like there has to be something that we can do naturally because I cannot do that again. Like the recovery was so terrible. So I started asking questions. Um, I called my doctor and I said, is there any way that I can deal with this naturally? And she said, I don't know. I don't have a protocol for that. And I said, okay, well, I guess I'm going to do some research because I'm not ready to have another surgery right now. Um, so I kept thinking like, I can't keep paying for surgery after surgery. Like what if I keep getting these and then I'm just like in debt and in pain, you know? Um, I ask questions like, why am I the person who always gets, you know, weird medication side effects? Like, is this a symptom of something else? Um, is it my diet? Is it my hormonal birth control that I'm, that I've been taking for so long? Um, can I reverse this? Can I lessen this? Uh, what is my body telling me? What is my intuition telling me? Um, and last but not least, but like, if I could design a protocol to solve this problem, what would that look like? So I suddenly threw everything I knew about my health up in the air. And I started asking all these questions and I decided to just flip the script a little bit and just do something different. So one of the first things that I decided to do was it didn't feel right to keep taking my hormonal birth control. Um, of course that's a personal decision and, you know, please talk to your doctor, but every bone in my body was like, if this is contributing to this at all, I just can't do it. Um, and I also examined my diet and designed an oil protocol. So I thought a lot 
in this moment about my intuition. I thought about, you know, what my body is trying to tell me. And if you've ever had a health crisis like this, like, you know what this is like, where it's like, you know what, stop and listen, just think about why am I in pain? Like, what is the root cause of all of these symptoms that I've been dealing with? And what can I do to make myself feel better no matter what? Um, I communicated to my doctor that I wanted to make some changes and that I wanted her support. Um, that was really important to me. I said like, you know, I'm going to try to deal with this problem naturally. And I, I really want your support. And I want to be able to call you and ask, give you status updates. Um, and I also had a moment where I was like, you know what, like YOLO, like I'll do whatever it takes anything. If, you know, if I have to completely change my diet, I'm willing to do it. Um, and I made a plan and I'm going to share that plan with you. So the first thing I did was dietary. <clears throat> um, I did a ton of research about cysts and tumors and how they form in the body. Um, and glucose, fructose, um, <clears throat> basically like sugar and carbs that convert into sugar in your body feed tumors. So I was like, well, if I stop feeding them, like what happens, you know? So I made some radical changes. I stopped drinking alcohol completely. Um, <clears throat> not wine, not, no nothing. I completely cut out, um, refined sugar. So sometimes I'll eat something with honey in it, but I haven't had any refined sugar since September of last year. Um, and that was really hard because I love sugar. It's really good. Um, but <laughs> it turns out that after about a week I stopped craving it. So, um, that is advice for you. If you want to cut out sugar, um, get through the first week and you will be fine. Trust me, I limited my dairy and I limited heavy carbs like pasta, Has bread. Has anyone else lost sound? No. We can hear Aisha. Oh, good, 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 good. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so I cut out most dairy and I cut out especially cheese because I, you know, I was eating a lot of cheese and milk. Um, and I started limiting my heavy carbs. So breads, pastas, crackers, snacking on chips all the time, stop doing it. And I also cut out processed foods. So things that come in a can, things that come in a box, things that you don't find on the fresh side of the grocery store, I cut those things out. So you might be looking at this and thinking like, that's really drastic. Um, I have ovarian cysts, but like, that's a lot but I just want to share a few thoughts with you about making dietary changes for your health that have come to me in the last year and a half. So the first one is, um, this is just a strategy. Don't go anywhere hungry. Even if you're going to a dinner party, just don't because you will eat things and then you will regret eating those things. So just don't do it. Um, keep tons of clean snack foods in your house, in your car, in your bag, just don't get hungry. Like, honestly, just snack on healthy things as much as possible throughout the day. Um, anti-inflammatory smoothies are your new best friend. I have a recipe on the next slide. Um, I drink this smoothie that I'm about to share with you, like pretty much every day. And I believe that it contributed a lot to the lack of inflammation. And of course, use your oils like a lot. And I have a whole daily regimen I'm really excited to share with you. And last but not least, if people comment, which they do on your extreme dietary changes, just remember that they're not paying your medical bills and they are not in pain like you are. So they might be snacking at the party. They might be fine, more power to them, but you're not if you have ovarian cysts. So just trust your body over the voices of other people at the dinner party please. This is my favorite anti-inflammation smoothie recipe. Um, we will be posting these slides by the way, so you can like print this out if you want to put this on your fridge. Um, so obviously I use lemon oil, which is 
super detoxifying, super cleansing for your endocrine system. So um, this also has tons of greens in it. So um, the secret to not tasting, if you look at this and you're like, oh, spinach and micro broccoli, cool, that's gonna be weird. Um, just know that the cinnamon completely covers up the taste of anything like that tastes like grass that's in the smoothie. It's gonna be delicious, you're gonna love it. Um, and of course, you know, fresh ginger, fresh turmeric, lemon oil, those things can help with the inflammation in your body caused by an issue like ovarian cysts. So now we have arrived at the doTERRA protocol that I took every day without fail. Um, the moment that I decided to do this was the moment that I committed to doing it. And I'm really proud of myself. So, um, if you have ovarian cysts, I really recommend that you get on the doTERRA LLV, AKA the lifelong vitality pack supplement pack. Um, it is a pack of three vitamins that you take every day. Um, I personally with, you know, the advice of my physician have completely replaced the other multivitamins that I was taking, uh, with the one exception of vitamin D because I live in Oregon. So, um, huge fan of the LLV. And the biggest superpower of the LLV is the inflammation, inflammation fighting powers that it has. So it's infused with oils like frankincense, which are cellular support oils. Um, it has the greens that you need in a day. It has omegas. Um, I just, honestly, I could do a whole call just on that. And we have that, we have whole calls just on the LLV. Um, which we will post actually as well, because that's super important. Um, if you don't know anything about the LLV, please ask your doTERRA person. This is literally the best doTERRA product that has ever been made. Um, and it's super high quality. So I took this every day. Um, and honestly, before my issue with ovarian cysts, I was so inconsistent in taking it. And if you know anything about supplements, you can't just take them willy nilly sometimes on a Tuesday on a Thursday, you have to take them like every day because your body will start changing and responding to the consistency in what you're taking. And it won't feel like it's not going to get what it needs and it needs to pull from something else. So every single day I took the LLV. The second thing I did was, um, I'm supposed to say number two. The second thing I did was I took two to three turmeric capsules internally every single day for inflammation. So turmeric capsules are more than just turmeric essential oil. Um, I actually have them right here. I carry them in my bag at all times. Nope, I put them away. So turmeric soft gels have two capsules in them. So the outside has the turmeric, the, pu the pure turmeric essential oil. And then the inside capsule has pure turmeric powder. So they're both extremely important. If you have ovarian cysts, you're really gonna wanna take the soft gels, not just the oil, because the oil gets released first and the powder gets released second and they boost each other's efficacy in the body. So my doctor, coincidentally or not, probably not said first thing, she's like, oh, like, what are you eating? You know, like, are you taking any turmeric? Are you taking any supplements? And it went off like a bell in my mind. I was like, ding, ding, ding. I need to start taking those turmeric soft gels consistently. So I started to take them. And after about three or four days, I noticed that I had less bloating. Um, and then when I take them around my period time, I have very much less cramping. So I just sing the praises of them. Lindsay's like, yeah, like they're magic, honestly. So these are my two biggest fans um, when it comes to what to take every day. Um, I just love both of these products so much. So the third thing I take is a drop of lemon oil in a glass of water. And I do this with like every glass of water I drink. So I ingest probably like three to five drops of pure lemon every day. Um, lemon oil is really helpful for your endocrine system, like I said, and um, it also tastes really, really good, but it's very cleansing. <clears throat> so I also use this blend 
And this blend was inspired by the Symphony of the Cells protocol. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's a basically a whole book of protocols designed for issues um, that your body might be having. And one example is hormonal balancing. So I had these three oils and they were kind of calling to me. And when I made the decision to design my own protocol for my ovarian cysts, I started using these every single day, three times every day. So I like to massage these three over my abdomen every day, um, two to three times every day, pretty consistently. Um, and I feel like it's really working. So frankincense is a cellular support oil. Um, if you don't know anything about frankincense, uh, your doTERRA person will like seeing the praises of frankincense for hours to you. It's just like magic. It's the one oil I'm just like, everyone needs to own immediately. Um, Cypress is the oil of flow. So, so many practitioners talk about like, if you have any blockages, like whether they be energetic and spiritual or literal and physical like this, you really need to be using Cypress. Um, and lemongrass is wonderful for helping balance your hormones as well. So I made a blend of this. I used it over my abdomen every single day and I recommend that you do the same. And I also use this protocol around period time. So fun trick to use is that if you want your period to start or start um, in an easier way that's not so painful, um, use basil and cypress. Cypress is the oil of flow. Like you really need it if you want easy, free flowing periods. Um, I also use basil for cramping. So huge fan of using that. Um, and to curb your flow, like if it's super heavy, super painful, super awful, use helichrysum and marjoram under your tongue. Doesn't taste good, but works great. So when I first started using this oil protocol, I started using helichrysum under my tongue. And I noticed that I had so much less cramping, less um, blood clots and just less discomfort in general. And I was also less fatigued. So definitely recommend using that. I also really suggest that you get the Clary Calm blend. I don't know if you can see this, but it's like a roll on. And this has a combination of a bunch of hormonal balancing oils in it. Um, it's really great for women um, in general, like to use around your period, whether you suffer from ovarian cysts or not. Um, if I had a teenager, I would get this for her immediately. Um, this is just really incredible to help you balance your hormones. So I use this on my ankles um, around my period time. So that's a huge um, protocol, I know, but it's really, really effective. Um, I also have a hormonal bath recipe to share with you. I'm obsessed. I just took this bath yesterday. It's really good. So what you want to do is you want to get a glass jar and put um, some Epsom salts in there. And then you want to put geranium, clary sage, Lang Lang, and Aroma Touch blend. So the Aroma Touch is like the pain relief aspect of this bath salt blend. And last part of this protocol, but definitely not least, is cramping and pain. So you're really going to want to use past tense and deep blue rub. So I like to use past tense first, um, which relieves like muscle tension. And then I like to use deep blue rub over top of that to drive the oil deeper into the skin. Um, I use this for cramps in general, but definitely when I was suffering from my ovarian cramp or from my ovarian cysts pain. Um, I use this protocol all the time. So I'm excited to share with you that a few months ago, I went for another ultrasound and my doctor said that I don't have any ovarian cysts at all whatsoever. Yeah. So I know, I know I was, I was so nervous to go in because I felt like I was going to get bad news. And she literally said, and I quote, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And I was just like, that is so, it was so like, it was so magical. And I called my friend and I was just like, oh my God, like I don't have any. And she's like, not only do 
do not have any ovarian cysts. You don't have any signs of anything, like as if nothing ever happened. Like besides like the phantom fallopian tube that's just missing now, like you basically have like a perfectly good system. So I just can't believe that that happened. So just wanted to share that with you. I love this pain support blend. Um, you're probably gonna wanna print this one out because this one's really good. So I just wanna share, if you're dealing with this problem, please trust your intuition. Um, trust, of course, connect with a physician, ask for advice, preferably a naturopath, get some information, compile information and do your own research. And just think like, what could I be doing to make this problem easier or harder? Like, what could I change? Um, and am I committed to making the changes that might be seem really hard, but actually could be the thing between me being bloated, sad, you know, in pain, constantly having to get ultrasounds. And here where I feel like I can dream again about my life and I'm paying off medical debt, feeling good, walking in the woods, you know, all of that good stuff. So I want you to get from here to there as well. Um, I want you to try this protocol if you haven't yet. And I want you to also connect with your doTERRA person because if you have ovarian cysts, you really need to make a plan and stick to it and track your progress because I think it could really change your life for the better. Um, thank you so much. I'm gonna go read your comments now.